Mahomes back, throws, it is incomplete, yes. picked off, picked off by the Lions. Brian Branch with it left side. He's gone, baby. He's going to the house. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Deflected yes. in the air, Branch ran under it, and he took it all the way back. Week 10 of the NFL. Welcome to the 20 in the Huddle podcast presented by Microsoft. I am Tim Twentyman, and I'm very happy to welcome in Dave Burkett, Detroit Lions uh, beat writer for the Detroit Free Press. Does a great job over there with the Free Press. And Dave, can you believe it's week 10 already oh, it's, in it's the NFL, crazy. NFL season? It, it flies. It goes so fast. I mean, thankfully we had a bye. Yes. Get a chance to recharge a little Much bit. Much needed. But yeah. But now it's, you know, nine, nine of these weeks ahead where uh, Lions got some big games before they make the playoffs. Now it's here, the dog so. days. Yeah. Now it's... It's the stretch run and you start looking at the standings a little bit and seeing, you know, where you're sitting. And obviously at six and two, Detroit's in a great spot. The healthiest they've been since week one. I think that's going to be huge moving forward for them. Oh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that is such a game changer in the NFL. I think most people realize that, that as good as teams can be, the the, the injury luck, the schedule luck, some of those things that go into it really help determine whether a, a team, how, how fit they are to make a playoff run. And Tim, I'll tell you this, I was talking to Anzalone in the locker room and he said, uh, you know, we, we talk about players not maybe, you know, wanting to look ahead. He said he actually bought Sunday ticket during the bye week so he could keep tabs on some of those teams <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, who they needed to, you know, who they were going to face yeah, in the yeah. playoffs and what they were looking I like. I like so, that. Yeah. Well, he's going to have some time on his hands yeah. here. He's, he's got a baby due, I know, here right. pre- pre- pretty soon. But I love what Jonah Jack said in the locker room, too. The band's all back together again on the offensive line. I think that's going to be huge, especially this week when you look at, you know, what the Chargers bring to the table defensively. Oh, you hit that. I mean, the, the Chargers are tied for second in the NFL yeah. in sacks, 31. I think, right now. They have they have three really good pass rushers up front, and I know we're going to get into that a little bit, but that's one of the best matchups of the of the week because the Lions, excellent offensive line. Uh, they've survived injuries up front, seven different starting combinations in, wow, eight, in eight games, and they're playing a couple really good pass rushers again this week. All right, let's get into the matchups, the key matchup segment. We go through five important matchups here, and look, let's start with the one I think everybody's pretty excited about. Yep. And it was the same thing last week when Penny Sewell took on Max Crosby, but Penny Sewell versus Joey Bosa. You look at Bosa and what, they, what he was able to do in their Monday night win, a two and a half sacks, forced fumble, fumble recovery, a tackle for loss in that win over the Jets. He's got six and a half sacks on the season. He's just another one of those guys that I consider one of the upper echelon edge rushers. What, what kind of matchup can we expect there from those two? Well, and you know, Dan Campbell said that this week that they've seen some good edge rushers, obviously Max Crosby right before the bye, and, and Sewell did a good job against Crosby. Yeah. And Crosby did not have a sack. He's one of the elite guys in the game. Um, you know, it, 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 those elite guys don't go back-to-back games very often without sacks. And so for Panay to hold him without a sack was something. Bosa is, you know, Ben Johnson said it today that the the edge rushers that the Chargers have, they are so good. They don't need to scheme up different games and do a lot of different things. Bosa is a guy that can win one on one. He he does some good things against the run too. So even when he's not rushing the passer, it's going to be incumbent upon Sewell to keep him out of the backfield to make sure that offense can get going. I think Sewell's one of the best tackles in the game, and I'm not talking about just right tackles. I'm talking tackles. Agreed. I think he's yeah. got a chance to reset the market. When, when his you know new contract comes due at 312 pass block reps Dave this year without allowing a sack and he's played left tackle too yeah you know Taylor missed some time early in the season he had to shift over so I mean to, to give up zero sacks and one quarterback hit in eight games I mean this guy is one of the best in the business. Tim, you're right. Uh, I think it's it's regardless of tackle position, even center guard, whatever, any offensive lineman, Panay Sewell belongs in the conversation as one of the best. And what he's done, I went back for my midseason grades and sort of watched all the sacks that the Lions have given up. And he's he doesn't show up on the tape. I mean, there was one where he had a holding penalty and, you know, someone chased yeah. off out of bounds. But but he's he's clinging in pass protection. And that's such a luxury for a Lions team to, to have because when Jared Goff has that protection, we all see what sort of quarterback he can be. I thought it was interesting. I think both of us on Tuesday asked Dan a question about the pass rush, and and I thought his response was interesting. While acknowledging how good that was, he was very quick to turn the, the conversation over to 
Taylor Decker yeah. and Penny Sewell. And we got some pretty good tackles over here too. So I think they're looking forward to that matchup as well. And maybe their ability to show off a little bit against Mac and Bosa. I think it, it the trust that they have in those guys, you know, um, Dan talked a little bit about when you have two edge guys, you know, sometimes you have to commit extra help to stopping those guys. And that's something that the Lions don't have to no. do a lot. And, and when you don't have to do that, even against the lead edge guys, that just allows you to get so many more guys out in the route, allows you the, the opportunity to do so many more things with your offense. And so I think that's why the Lions are confident that they can still put up some pretty big points against the Chargers. 100%. All right, let's flip to the other side of the ball. Alex Anzalone, who's been terrific with the Lions all season. I think that move from the Mike to the Will really suited him and this defense well. And I think he's got an important matchup this week against Austin Eckler, their talented running back. And it's not so much what Eckler does in the run game. We know he's very capable there, but just look to last year when he had 107 receptions and they use him a lot in the yep. screen game, in the underneath game, and his ability to turn those short catches into big plays. I think it's a big part of their offense, at least it's a big threat in their offense. I think this is an important game for, for Alex Anzalone. I think he's going to be their guy to maybe shut a lot of that down in, in, in terms of the passing game with Eckler and you know his speed and space. I think this, this is a good matchup between those two. You know, um, you're right that Anzalone playing that weak side, I think has brought out some of the, the, the pass coverage skills and the ability that maybe got overlooked a little bit when he was playing more in the middle. And um, he's been such a factor for the Lions this year. And you talked to Aaron Glenn this week and, and Dan Campbell, and they talk a lot about Keenan Allen. And, and maybe maybe we forget a little bit about what Eckler brings to that offense. But, um, you know, Kellen Moore likes to throw the ball. And Eckler's a guy that, especially with Mike Williams out, has really, I think, emerged as, yeah. and he had a big year last year, but he's really emerged as one of those go-to targets, one of those safety guys that, that Justin Herbert likes to throw the ball to. And so um, from a, a defensive standpoint, uh, the Lions are going to have to stop Keenan Allen, but they're going to have to make sure that Austin Eckler doesn't hurt them when they when they are able to, if they are able to bottle up a Keenan Allen. First and foremost, to stop in the run. The Detroit's been terrific doing that all no year, doubt. second in the NFL. Um, and, and I think a big part of that, obviously, their, their front four, but I think those linebackers have been really active, really good. We've talked about Derek Barnes a lot, but I don't think Anceloni gets enough credit league-wide for just maybe the kind of versatility he gives the Lions. You talked about the the, the pass rush. He's also got three sacks. I think he's a very um, underrated blitzer. Uh, six quarterback hits. He's defended four passes. He's got five tackles for loss. He, he's kind of that guy that if, if there's a play on defense, you know, he had the one tip pass that was intercepted by... Green Bay. Um, yeah. yeah, that was intercepted by um, uh, Kirby, er, not Kirby. Jacobs, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Jacobs. Yeah. And so he's just kind of always around the ball. And, and I think this is this is going to be a big week for him. You know, the thing with, with that, too, Tim, and I know you know this, their, their linebacking core, the the versatility that they have. Right. We've seen Jack Campbell play a lot of strong side linebacker. Right. Anzalone rush the passer. Maybe it's Derek Barnes that does some of that. And, and when you when you're able to play three linebackers like that and maybe one of those guys be your strong side, but you don't know which guy it's going to be from week to yeah. week or possession to possession. I think that really impacts the offense and, and their ability to identify what the defense is are trying to do gives Aaron Glenn some versatility for sure. for sure all right let's go back to Detroit's offensive line because another guy who I don't think gets enough credit is Taylor Decker for what he does on, on the left side and I think he's gonna see Khalil Mack quite a bit a guy he's seen probably yeah. quite, quite a bit over his career when he was back with uh with, with Chicago when when Taylor first got into the league but um this is a guy he's still doing it at a really high level and I think the combination of, of Bosa on one side and Khalil on the other, I think that's what makes this difficult. I think it's easier when a team's got like a Max Crosby last week. You knew that was the guy, right? So you can send some help, some right. chips, do some extra stuff. I think it's a little bit harder when you've got two kind of bookend defense events, Max still doing it at a high level. And I think what you've seen from from Mac, because maybe some people thought that, hey, at his age, maybe he's not going to be able to get it done. But with Bosa, that has helped unlock him. Yeah. He had that six sack game. I think he caused two fumbles in that game, yeah. maybe three forced fumbles on the season. Like he is still getting it done at a high level. And you're right, when both of those guys are on the edge, you can't, I mean, you got to pick one if you're going to send some chip help. You can't commit to both of them. And I don't know which one you do because they're both so good. Right. And the thing with Taylor, though, too, is, you know, he's, we all know he's been playing through some things with the ankle and, mm -hmm. and he's been a trooper out there. And, and, you know, he had a couple, when he came back, there were, there were, you know, some, some spots where you could tell that that ankle was bothering so him. I think that bye week is going to do him a world oh, of good. Yeah. And now when you face a guy like a Khalil Mack, you know, maybe that's uh, this is a good a good time for for Taylor Decker to get Khalil Mack 
I even think. dealing with some things, two sacks allowed, two quarterback hits all year. That's yeah. pretty darn good in this league for a left tackle. That's right, because you're you're facing some of the best pass <laughs> rushers. And as you said, when you have both those guys on the edge, given the revolving door that's been on the interior of the offensive line this season, uh, just to the the peace of mind I think that gives a coach to have those guys both as your edge protectors. It's it's done well for Jared Goff. It's done well for Ben Johnson in the offense. Yeah, I think it's important getting Jonah Jackson back, getting no Frank Ragnow back, and containing the inside, letting those let Lang Taylor and, and uh, uh, Penne kind of just do what they do without having to worry about the inside guys. First time since week one, and I know it was a different group in week one, but the first time since week one, they've really had their starting offensive line. Graham Glasgow should be in there yeah. uh, instead of Vitae this and he's week. he's earned but it. All, yeah, absolutely. But all those guys are healthy now, at least appear to be healthy. And when you get that group together, I know the Lions are excited to see what they can do, they, that unit can do together. And you've done TV. You've done radio. I, I, I saw the little tease you did with the Keenan Allen there earlier. You're <laughs> setting back, this, coming you're back setting to that one. this one yeah. up a little bit. Bit, but Cam Sutton versus Keenan Allen. And, and I know Jerry's going to probably see um, right. Keenan as well because I think Aaron Glenn trusts both those guys. But I, but I think in terms of best on best, yeah. uh, Cam versus Keenan Allen, you look at Keenan Allen, um, I mean, 62 catches, 720 yards, four touchdowns, and, and no one else is even close. I mean, he is their guy. And um, Aaron talked about it too, just kind of how subtle he is and how he can change speeds and create se separation by, by going from, you know, slow to fast and fast to slow. And um, he's he is, when it comes to their pass game the number one guy Detroit's got to worry about containing. I think I think people know Keenan Allen from fantasy football because he's been around so long but if you haven't watched them because it's the Chargers right it's West Coast maybe maybe an AFC we don't we don't get to see him a lot here in Detroit he's like the Chargers Amon Ross St. Brown in a lot of ways. I mean, he just gets open no matter what teams do to, to cover yeah. him. You know, last week I was watching that game on Monday night and, you know, slow first half and you're thinking, is he, and then he ends up with six or eight catches yeah. and, you know, 90 yards and all of a sudden it's like, okay, it's this is the guy that they go through to move the You find that with Amon Ross all the time. You're like, ah, oh, he's been kind of quiet. Oh, what? He caught seven balls passes. for 100 yards? Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing how those guys, even yeah. when the defense is focused on them, can catch their passes. And look, of all the matchups that we've talked about and, and I think the Lions tackles are, are great and you know you're going to win some you're going to lose some but this is the one that, that maybe worries me the most from the Lions standpoint just because I think the Lions secondary has been pretty good this year but you look at Garoppolo Mayfield some of the quarterbacks that they've faced recently I think there's been some opportunities to make some plays deep and they just haven't hit them so I think the Lions really have to be on top of their game in the secondary this and week and look at the two losses right when quarterbacks were afforded the opportunity to sit back yeah. in the pocket and throw the football that's Lamar, why Gino, yes. Yeah, they were days. able to, to, to tear him up. And, and Justin Herbert, I think, is right in that echelon of, of top quarterbacks in this league. But look, Cam's been, I think we both can agree, a, a really good addition for this Lions secondary. I mean, he's given up one touchdown all year. Um, and he's kind of just that tough, gritty guy that you don't notice a yeah. lot in the game, which I think is a great thing. I, I don't tend to notice Cam a lot in, in a game unless he's coming up and making a tackle or something like that. He doesn't give up a ton of big plays. He's just been one of those guys that's really steady it's good matchup I know you brought this set up um, earlier you know the Lions defense doesn't give up a lot of big plays right they haven't given up a touchdown longer than 18 yards I think yeah. it is this year which is it which is pretty remarkable but why Sutton flies under the radar a little bit is because you know he hasn't put up the big statistical number no he doesn't have interceptions like Jerry Jacobs does so and he hasn't been challenged as much I don't think as, right. as Jacobs or some of the others in that secondary so when that happens you tend to overlook it until there's a big play that goes against him and he just hasn't given up many of those this year that will be a fun matchup to watch because, like you said, he that that's best on best, I think, with Detroit's secondary and obviously with Keenan they, Allen. They probably know each other a little bit, too, just from playing in the AFC, Cam Sutton, the last you know yeah. four, five, six years. In Pittsburgh, yeah. All right, let's finish up on this one. Sam Laporta, the rookie tight end, has had a terrific start to, to his NFL career. And I think we're going to see Derwin James potentially on him a, a, a <laughs> few times. They're really versatile safety. It'll be interesting to see how um, – San Diego, San Diego, how Los yeah. Angeles is, I knew I was going to do it one time, how Los Angeles' defense, yeah. um, you know, tries to, to defend St. Brown and Laporta. I think Derwin James is going to be part of that, which way, we don't really know. But when it comes to Sam Laporta, I mean, I this is pretty unusual for a rookie. Without We've a been doubt. around a long time. We've seen some rookie top rookie picks drafted to this football team and just not have the kind of success that this young man is. It, 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 it's pretty rare. Why do you think it is? 
That's a good question. I mean, the tight end position, as you know, I'm sure you've talked about before, is, is so difficult for so a rookie hard. to to, uh, to make an impact in the NFL. I think it's, you know, two rookies have ever had a thousand yards receiving at that position. And, and he's, you know, on a on a. Uh, almost record pace for for that. He's look. He is really good at making yards after the catch. I think he's good enough. Uh, uh, he's a good enough blocker that you have to respect that element of it within the play action game, and that helps free him up. I mean, he's yeah. look the the teams that have had a little bit of success against him this year. The Ravens with some good linebackers. Um, I'm trying to think there was one other game right around there where Tampa, Tampa. with some good linebackers. So I'll be interested to see how the Chargers try to defend them because the Chargers have some speed at that linebacker core. But yeah. James is a difference maker. He's a really good player in that back end. And that's certainly a guy that if those two or when those two go head to head, that's one of those game within the game matchups that you want to watch. Teams have targeted him 20 times this year. They've completed 16 of those. No touchdowns wow. allowed. No really big plays. But they've had some success, so maybe Derwin when you, that Derwin. Yeah. So maybe when you see that matchup, um, you, you might want to attack that. But to your point about uh, Laporta, forty catches, four touchdowns, four hundred yards. He's only the only tight end in NFL history to accumulate those numbers through his first eight games. So he is on a, a, a record pace. I think one of the things with him is in. in both his tight end coach and Campbell have said this is how just how smart he is. How you've got to tell him to do something one time yeah. and that's it. And I think that I think as a young player is so hard at that position because you're learning the run fits and all the pass blocking and three different positions and everything else that you talked about. Yeah. He's just I, I, he's going to be a good one for a long time, I think, Dave. I think they've said too, you know, the his desire to be perfect. And again, no one's going to be perfect, but that drive right to get that right and, and to be that that sort of impact player in every aspect of the game is, is something that, um, you know, maybe sets him apart from some of these other guys. And look, I, I think in a game like this, because Derwin James is a really good player, if Sam can add any yards after the catch, if there's any sort of run after the catch that he can do, that's going to be important for moving that ball downfield because this is a, a team that, you know, you don't want to have those 10, 12 play drives against because that's just more opportunities for Mac Bosa for those guys to get after the quarterback. So the more they can get chunk plays against yeah. this Chargers defense and, and Sam's going to be a big part of that I think the better it's going to be for this Lions offense. And to your point for them to take the football away to 15 of those, I think that's their plus nine turnover differentials tied for the, for the NFL lead. They do a good job taking the ball away. They're pretty good on third down. They get after the quarterback. This should be a good task for Ben Johnson in this offense. Those are the five key matchups. He is Dave Forquette from the Detroit Free Press. Dave, great job as always. Got it. Happy to be here. And uh, we'll be back next with the player. Welcome back to the 20 Minute the Huddle podcast presented by Microsoft. And I'm happy to welcome in the right tackle, the pro bowler, Penne Sewell. Penne, thanks for joining me. Thank you. So look, we were met, we were talking about a little bit before the tape started, the helmets. What'd you, what'd you think of the helmets the other day? No, I liked them. Uh, they bounced off really well with the grays and uh, yeah. So, but you're, I mean, you know uniforms, right? I mean, you went to Oregon. Yeah. I mean, this was bit, like a, a little bit. So, yeah. It's, um, you like the combination with the with the gray? It was all good? Yeah, no. At first, I was a little questionable about the color face mask and the jerseys, but they actually bounced off pretty well. And then uh, watching the film, I was like, yeah, I like the touch. I like the touch added. Well, you guys obviously played well. You played well. Um, tough matchup with Max. And look, it, it's like it doesn't get any easier in this league, does it? Because you, now you've got another one this week with, with Joey Bosa. Um, just what you see on film from him and, and just what what that Matt, what do you expect from that matchup? And, and how excited are you when, you when you face some of these, you know, top guys? You look what you did with Max two weeks ago, how well you've been playing and, and, and going against these guys. You look forward to these big time matchups? Oh, uh, without a doubt. I think it's because you're in a league for a reason. You're trying to go against the best. And uh, some players, their prime don't doesn't last too long. So if you can get kind of get in the action when it does, you just got to be grateful for that type of matchup. But uh, yeah, another great matchup with Joey. Uh, lots of things stand out as a player, but he's very smooth. Uh, not a lot of wasted movements and uh, very technical with his hands and uh, the intent with his, with his feet kind of tie in with his hands, which also makes him a really great player. So uh, it's going to be another good one. So 
and it's a it's a good duo. I think Dak's going to have his hands full on the other side with with obviously you know Khalil Mack's been doing this for a long time. I, I, how much harder is it to face a team when they've got kind of bookend guys when they've got two guys and you know no offense to to Las Vegas but you kind of knew Max was the guy right and and you could maybe um, you know generate some protections move some stuff over give you a little bit of help here and there when you got two bookend guys how much more difficult is that to handle as an offense? Uh, definitely is more difficult just because now you got to pay attention to two players and uh, now. Now both tackles have to be really locked into every play and uh, really be locked into their technique. So uh, me and Dak, we know the matchup that we got and we just we got the big hat. So it was funny. We, we, we asked Dan Campbell about their pass rush and, and Bosa and Mack, and he was very, very quick to turn the subject over back to you and, and to Decker. And he said, uh, we got some pretty good tackles over there that play pretty good football, too. When you look across the way, the other side at, at Decker, do you view him as an as a kind of undervalued person league wide? I mean, does he doesn't get the credit I think maybe he deserves? And and just talk about what he's meant for you coming into the league and just how good of a player he is over there on that left side. Oh man, extremely underrated in my mind. He's top five. Uh, I I try to compete with him. I, I don't really make it known, but like every time I see him do something great, I'm just trying to top it and I'm just trying to. Uh, try to be better than it because he does a great job, especially in pass pro. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of people don't know O-line play like that, but he's on the island at times and uh, he has the big hat. So just seeing him go to work, it just uh, inspires me and motivates me to even go even go further. I think people on the, the the league would probably say that you're a, a top five tackle. And we're not just talking about right tackles here, Panay, we're talking about the tackle position in the league. I mean, you've gone 312, um, you know, pass reps without giving up a sack. I think you've given up one um, quarterback sack. Just talk about your play and just how comfortable you are kind of settling into your third year, becoming kind of one of the, the best tackles in, in, in the game. No, I appreciate that. Uh, but I think it's just kind of getting more comfortable with the game. Now that I'm year three playing right tackle now, not having to focus on flipping my feet and try to uh, engage different types of muscles. So uh, just being comfortable with that and also the game plan. I'm trying to lock into uh, the snap count more and not just thinking, ah, oh, what, what do I got to do? How I got to do it? Like uh, my mind's just slowing down. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Getting the whole band back together again. That's what, you know, we talked to Joe earlier in the week and he kind of made that comment. I think it's been seven different offensive line combinations in eight <sighs> games that, for you guys. I don't even know. Yeah, to start the season. <laughs> That's has, crazy. Man. Yeah, That's I mean, crazy. And to get, you know, Frank back, to get Jonah back. Obviously, Graham's playing great football right now. Um, to to kind of get that that start starting five, I know it's a little bit different than week one, but to get your guys back healthy, have everyone back, how much are you looking forward to that finally for, for a week and a good week to do it maybe against these guys? Man, uh, yeah, perfect timing, just like you said. But I'm excited to see the boys go to work. Yeah, That's really the, the main thing to me. Uh, when I turn on the film after a game and just seeing Jonah run off the ball, great hands, and then Frank doing his strong, strong as ever. So, uh, And then Graham's playing playing phenomenal so just seeing them go to work and uh playing with them is just a such a blessing so i just can't wait to uh really enjoy that time with them all right i gotta ask you this because friday practice is coming up it's thursday so if you guys out there don't know on fridays you guys at the beginning of practice get an opportunity <laughs> to run routes with the quarterbacks now yeah. you laugh but yeah. you get this is something I, I i feel like has started to be been taken seriously in the offensive line room First question is, who's got the best hands amongst the group? And so every Friday, you guys get to run kind of go routes. The quarterback's already the ball. I know Coyote tries to say that he's got the best hands in, really? in, in the offensive That's line. Room. He's pretty serious about it. I'm just curious your thoughts on, on who you think has the best hands in the group. And I'll, I'll give my, my thoughts as well, but I want to hear you first. Um, humbly, I don't think that's a – I don't got to answer that one. Uh, but – Everyone knows. That's Everyone knows, say. and I would agree um, <laughs> that I think it, 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 it's you. Are you? We saw it a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, was it last year? Yeah, against Minnesota. Yep. Ever, yeah, last yep. year against Minnesota, got a chance to to catch the football. Are you excited for anxious? Do you get in Ben's ear at all for an opportunity to get your hands on the ball? But we saw it this year. Yeah, picking up the fumble and, and <laughs> mean, mean running with it. That was crazy. Do you actually. want to get into space a little bit? Show I that mean, off. Want to, yeah. You always want to, uh, but uh, I trust Ben. Ben comes up with all the 
all the plays and he's very creative with it. So yeah, he whatever is. he throws my way, I so I take it. So, uh, but I haven't been in his ear about it, but um, just looking forward to it. Yeah, if it happens because guys have said they think pound for pound you're probably the best athlete on the team. A lot of guys say I know Dan has said that too. <laughs> You could probably play some tight end in this league. Huh? Oh, I gotta lose at least a hundred plus pounds before <laughs> that's even what a conversation. Right I'm at 337 right now, so you don't move like you're 337. Yeah, uh, I try <laughs> try to move fast as possible. <laughs> so you're coming off the bye. You guys are six and two. You're in a good spot. Um, but Jared and Ben both this week have talked about there being more kind of meat on the bone offensively. Do you guys view that in your room too? And is that the exciting part about being six and two, knowing that you're six and two, but you still really outside of Carolina haven't really played a complete game and and you guys can still get a lot better offensively yeah just like they said man there's a lot there's a lot out there and uh uh, we took some time coming back off that bye to really kind of self-scout us a little bit so uh after watching that there's so much on the bone so that's really just like you said it is the exciting part that we can go out there and really uh make those plays even better and it was just that chemistry too and with all the old line coming back just like you said that's very yeah. important so uh yeah it's a perfect time to really start hitting our stride so we're just going to be working at that how's fatherhood treating you man fatherhood is great it's the best thing a ever year in my old life. right a year old he just turned one that's November. fun so sleeping through the night now uh, a little bit yeah he has a couple rough <laughs> nights but for the most part yeah he's sleeping through what's the your night. favorite part of fatherhood being a father myself, I, I kind of know where you're at. So, I think it's just the way he just looks at me and smiles every time I come home. That that right there is just uh, nothing else in the world matters. Yeah, uh, I go into tunnel vision. It's all about him. So, uh, with that precious smile, man, it just makes me uh, just think about how bad I want this lifestyle for him to just not even worry about a thing growing up. 100%. All right, let's finish with this. Ford Field, it has been such a home field advantage for you guys. Um, you got a couple games coming up here after the trip out to L.A. Just what, what's that atmosphere been like? And, and just how big, from a player's perspective, has that home field advantage been for you guys? It's been huge, man. I think everybody can see it. Uh, some of the pre-snap penalties that the – the fans have been generating it's crazy and uh, sometimes I can't even hear myself think when the defense is out there and it just the whole stadium feels like it's moving a little bit but uh, I also want to say appreciate all the fans that uh, yell Sue out there I hear y'all <laughs> now that's love for real that's that's awesome well you guys hit the road it's a big one this week and then you got a couple at home you're six and two you're healthy healthier than you guys have been since week one rejuvenated a little bit go out west get a big win come back home and keep it rolling yes, and sir. thanks for taking the time i appreciate you thank you